What is going on everybody, Estas here, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about the top couple of stocks and ETFs that I'm watching and looking to trade heading into the fourth week of June in 2019, as well as going over a couple of stocks and ETFs that you guys ended up calling out either on Friday's video in the comment section or in the call out section in our Discord group chat. And if you did call out a stock, I really do appreciate it. I will be getting to it in this video. But before we do get into the topics of today's video, for everybody out there that finds value in these videos, you enjoy the content that I'm putting up here on YouTube, feel free to go down below and hit that like button. It really supports me and supports the channel in general. And if you actually want to be further connected with our community, the Strive Smart community, there are two links down below in the description box, one of them being the Discord group chat and the other one being the Facebook group. I guarantee you guys will find a ton of value in those two communities. You'll be able to talk to a bunch of other traders and investors all throughout the day. So let's just get into it, guys. Without further ado, let's talk about what the S&P did very quickly last week, going over here to the five-day, five-minute chart. You guys can see, based on the past week's performance, the S&P has been continuing the uptrend that it's been on pretty much ever since the beginning of June in 2019. You all should know by now that the month of May was a big sell off month and then we got the news of a potential rate cut and that sent the markets flying right we hit a bottom at about 2730 and we actually hit an all-time high this past Friday at about 2964 and if we go back to that five day five minute chart you guys can see we started off the week at about 2887 ended up hitting again that all-time high at about 2864 and you can see the consolidation of the S&P 500 um, pretty much for the rest of the day ever since we did hit um, or rather after we hit that all-time high we've been consolidating on the 2950 level which if we go back to the 184 hour chart notice how that was actually the previous all-time high that we hit back in April of 2019 towards the end of the April month we hit that high that's when we sold off for the month of May and now we're pretty much at that level again and we're holding that level the old resistance as a new support and another thing I want to mention here guys is the S&P and honestly the whole market or all the markets in general you know the NASDAQ and the Dow they're pretty overbought uh, in terms of the RSI indicator and for those of you guys that don't know the RSI indicator is this indicator that you see right down here the 30 threshold is very oversold if this line was down here, that means the S&P would be very oversold. And since it's up at the 70 level and it's above the 70 level, that means it's extremely, extremely overbought. So that's kind of a worrisome factor for me. But with the way the market has been performing lately, the way it's just been running up crazily, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if we did end up hitting a 3000 S&P 500 here in the next couple of weeks, especially if we do actually get a rate cut in July, which a bunch of people think is going to happen. So that's kind of the rundown right now on the S&P 500 guys, you know, the 500 largest publicly traded U.S. companies. Let's say we start to sell off from here. We may be testing the 2915 level. If we break that, you know, we may be going at 2900 flat. And from there, if we break that level, 2885 is going to be a level that I'm going to be keeping an eye on. But until we do get that, you know, uh, confirming factor of us breaking down, you know, I don't really think we're going to be hitting those levels quite yet. We need to just see, um, you know, how the market is performing. And actually, you guys can see the futures right now. They opened up about an hour ago. You guys can see the S&P future is up $4.75 right now. The NASDAQ is up about $16.75. And the Dow Jones Industrial Average is up around $24. So the major markets, the Dow, S&P, NASDAQ, the futures right now, they're all up. And if this continues into tomorrow's session, into tomorrow's pre-market session, who knows, guys, that could signal a green day for tomorrow for at least the beginning of 
tomorrow in the stock market. So let's just get into the, the stocks, the ETFs that I'm personally watching now, now that we got that little update out of the way. And I actually talked about some of these in Friday's video towards the end of the video. But if you guys didn't catch that, I'm going to be going over those stocks and some other ones as well right now. So the first one that I'm watching is INTC, also known as Intel Corporation. So Intel Corporation, this stock has been hammered over the past couple of months. I don't know if it was due to the earnings report. I'm assuming it was because we can see we peaked at 59.59 back in the middle of April. And from there, we tanked all the way down to $44 in the matter of one month. And you can see the earnings report. I think it probably was due to the earnings report. You know, the earnings report after we saw that we tanked, we hit the bottom at about $44 where we got a triple bottom and it was actually a pretty good support from back in what month was this guys let me take a look for you back in the middle towards the end of October in 2018 we got the bottom at about $42 before making that run up to nearly $60 we sold off we got the triple bottom and from there guys a really good confirming uptrend pattern that we saw was the breakout of the 50 SMA here we saw once we broke out of the 50 SMA, we started to hold that level as a support, which was a very good, another very good confirming sign. And from there, guys, we started to, again, make higher lows and higher highs until we broke out of the 180 SMA a couple of days ago, which was actually the, the confirming factor that I was personally waiting for to put money um, into INTC. I have yet to actually buy INTC, but I am watching it due to this pattern that we are seeing right now, as well as the bullish cross that is starting to form here, which is a 50 SMA, the 50 SMA crossing above the 180 SMA. And for those of you guys that don't know what a bullish cross is, it's pretty much signifying a potential um, bullish bullish run here, right? The moving averages, we use those to identify trends, bearish and bullish trends. Notice how the 50 SMA crossed below the 180 SMA here back in the beginning of May. And from there, we saw a lot of bullish blood, right? We saw a lot of red and now we're seeing the 50 SMA cross above the 180 SMA. So this can be the signal that we need on a technical basis for the INTC stock here to continue its run. So I'm really liking it right now. Honestly, guys, where we are at this point, we're right near the 50 SMA, so this could be a pop zone right now. We need to see, in my opinion, uh, a $48 pop, uh, you know, into the $48 level, maybe $48.50 before potentially, uh, th th what I'm looking for, before potentially taking a position, and that's honestly going to break us out of this resistance from the past couple of days, and it's going to be pushing us to that higher high that we need to see for the continuation of the uptrend. And from there, you know, the next resistance I'm looking at here, you know, we can probably trade this between $48.50 to about $50. Notice how over the past, you know, 180 days, which is this time frame chart that I'm looking at, you know, the $50 price point has been a strong resistance. Notice how here, $49.50 to $50, we got topped off here once, twice, you know, three times, four times, you know, five times here before we broke out of it. So this is a very strong resistance um, nonetheless, right? So that is what I'm looking for um, a bounce on the 50 SMA, which we're already doing. And if we break out of 50, you know, we may be going at $50.50, maybe $52. You know, those are the next resistance levels. But INTC right now, it's looking very good on a reversal um, pattern here. So another one that I'm watching is 3M Company, which is kind of in the same, um, uh, uh, you know, kind of the same pattern as INTC. It's been battered down a lot over the past couple of months, you know, 3M is kind of in a, in a situation where their income or their, um, their revenue, their top line hasn't been growing a lot over the past couple of years. And that has really put pressure, honestly, on the stock here over the past couple of months, as well as the China, um, the China trade war, the China trade, um, tariffs, you know, this has a lot of pressure on 3M as well, because a lot of their sales actually do come from China. I believe like 20, 30% of their sales or something like that. 
that. So, you know, once we got, you know, that trade, uh, the, the tariffs, you know, the trade war tension a couple of months back, two, three months back, that dropped the stock from 220 all the way down to 159. And very similar to INTC, you know, this was being rejected by the 50 SMA. Now we're actually breaking out of it, or we did a couple of weeks ago, and now we're holding it as a new support. We broke out of the 166 level, which is very nice. That was a resistance. We're holding that, or we did bounce on it as a new support. Very, very nice. And we pushed up to a higher high here a couple of days ago. Pretty much this whole past week, if we go to the five day, five minute, you know, we hit 166 and we launched off of that. And then we hit a high of 174 and we're maintaining that 180 SMA support very nicely. But the thing is here, guys, is we're at a resistance on the 184 hour chart chart under this 180 SMA. So ideally here, I would want to see a break out of that level. I would want to see a bullish cross and I would want to see a break into, I would say the 176, 177 before considering a position. And, and at that point, honestly, guys, you know, 3M might be a bit overbought because it's already overbought at this level. So if we popped up a bit more, that would put it at an even more overbought status. So I'm thinking now, you know, we might actually get rejected by the 180 SMA. We may retest that 50 SMA at about $170. And from there, if we hold it and continue the run, that could be a good entry, maybe at 170, 171, 172, all the way up to maybe 178, 180. That's what I'm personally watching here on um, 3M. And one warning sign about 3M, again, if the China trade war, the tariff situation gets worse, this can have a lot more pressure on 3M in the next couple of months. So be mindful of that. You don't want to get caught up in a trade here where, you know, you get in at 170 and then all of a sudden we get some tweets from Trump or whatever and it sends the stock down. You know, be careful with that. Keep a, st a tight stop loss. That's at least what I'm personally doing if I do get into 3M. So Disney is another one, guys. I talked about this one on um, Friday. Disney right now has hit a resistance at about 143, 144-ish. Um, 1 this was from back in uh, the towards the end of April in 2019. You guys can see we hit that level again on the 14th of June, got pushed down from there, hit it again on the 18th of June, got pushed down, and we actually just hit it again this past week where we got hit and pushed down again. But the thing is, we're still holding this trend from the past couple of uh, weeks slash months here on Disney, as you guys can see from this trend line here, and we're also still holding that 50 SMA as a support, which gives me... Um, reason to believe that the uptrend is still intact. Until we break downwards, probably down into the 130s, maybe 120s again, you know, Disney's uptrend is still intact, and I'm viewing this as a potential dip buy until the technicals tell me otherwise, right? So we're seeing that now. This could be a nice position here, especially if we sell off and maybe retest that 50 SMA maybe at 139. That'll bring the R side down a bit to a healthier level. That can be a nice entry point but honestly guys there are other um you know stocks and etfs out there that offer a lot more potential in my opinion but i still figured i'd throw in disney in the list because it's still one that i'm definitely watching i'm definitely looking to trade this especially leading up to the release of their streaming service here in a couple of months i think a lot more hype is going to build up into disney and honestly guys i've mentioned this in the past couple of videos once that streaming service does release least, I think Disney might actually start to cool off a bit, right? Because we got that price, uh, the, the, the price news of what the streaming service was going to be, which shot the stock up and pumped a lot of hype into the stock. And typically when there's a when there's a big event in a particular company and they release whatever that um, service or product is, you know, the stock typically not always, but sometimes it does cool off afterwards, you know, as that um, hype starts to fizzle down, if that makes any sense. So Disney, DIS, definitely watching that one. And AMD is another one that I'm watching here, Advanced Micro Devices. This one hit, I think that's an all-time high at about $34.30. Yup, it was an all-time high. We actually broke the resistance very briefly from back in September 
September of 2018. And if we go to here, the 184 hour chart, you guys can see that we sold off pretty aggressively. We broke the $30 level, but we're still holding this 50 or rather the 180 SMA support, which has been a support over the past couple of months of trading here pretty much since the uh, beginning of 2019. So I'm thinking here, guys, if we do end up holding the 180 SMA, we do end up holding, you know, this 29 old resistance as a new support. This could be a good entry on AMD, especially since the RSI is very, very oversold. But one thing to be mindful of is a lot of these semiconductor stocks right now are under pressure. We saw Broadcom, their guidance for the next um, year, it's it's pretty negative, and this actually dumped a lot of the semi stocks. You guys can see, you know, AMD has been tanking over the past couple of trading days due to this, and a bunch of other ones have been as well. I think Micron, if we go to Micron very quickly, Micron did very poorly when that news came out, and it's honestly been doing poorly for the past couple of months, and there's a bunch of other ones as well. But AMD, you know, who knows, guys, it can be a temporary short-term play here because it is overbought and, or rather, oversold, and it is at a level where um, it's been bouncing over the past couple of months. So I definitely think it's worth watching despite semi-stocks being under pressure as of right now. So those are four stocks that I'm watching. A subscriber actually commented, um, JD, JD.com, for those of you guys that don't know, this is known as the Amazon of China, right? You know, Alibaba is also known as the Amazon of China, but a lot of people view JD.com as that as well. And we notice how, you know, obviously the Chinese stocks have been under pressure, just like these some of these American companies due to the tariff situation with China. We peaked at about $31 here. We started to sell off down to about $25. And that was actually a pretty big downside move there. I think this was in the beginning of April, I'm assuming, right? Yeah, beginning of April. Uh, uh, yep, from $31 down to about $25. That was about a 20% drop. And from there, guys, we've been actually trending up, right, over the past couple of trading weeks here since the beginning of June. We hit the 25 level, right? We broke out of the 50 SMA resistance. Now we're holding it as a new support, which is very nice. Higher lows, and uh, higher highs, which is nice for an uptrend pattern as well. We're breaking out of this 180 SMA resistance now. But one thing I'm looking at, guys, is take a look at that trend line that I just drew, right? $31, you know, is a high. The next high is $30.95. And notice how that's a lower high from the previous. The next high is at about $30.50, which is a lower high from the previous. And now we're at a point at the resistance of this channel where we've been rejected, or rather the resistance of this trend line where we've been rejected over the past couple of um, trading weeks and months. So this is a point in time where I think if we do this, what I just showed you guys on this trend line, you know, if we break out of the resistance and into, let's say, the $30 level, that's a huge bullish breakout on JD.com. And notice how we talked about the moving averages, the bullish crosses when the 50 SMA is crossing above the 180 SMA. Well, what's going on here, guys? Well, the 180 SMA is about to be crossed above by the 50 SMA. We're noticing how there's about to be a bullish cross here. So this this could be a play, especially if we break into the $29.50, $30 level, if we break out of this um, top line here, this top level of resistance. But again, be very, very careful, guys, because if we even get a single tweet, some news that the tariff situation, there's no trade war in sight, this can hit these stocks, 3M included, very, very heavily. And of course, a bunch of these other Chinese companies like Alibaba, Tencent, all of these other companies. So JD, I'm watching it, but I'm being very cautious due to what I just said. And it's kind of overbought at this point, but we could break out if we do end up getting out of that level, guys. So G-O-O-S, Goose, is another stock that was called out. And we can see here, I'm not too sure what went down with their earnings report, but I'm assuming it wasn't the best because the stock went from $48 all the way down to $31, guys. That's a drop of about 32%. So in my opinion, you know, when you see a stock dropping 32% after an earnings report, 
you have to understand that that earnings report was probably not the best, right? And we notice how we ended up bottom, bottoming out at about $31, pretty strong support at that level. And now we're starting to break back into um, above rather this 50 simple moving average, right? Notice how we're starting to hold that level as a new support. And we're starting to potentially test this 180 SMA here in the next couple of weeks if the stock starts to break into the $40 level. But one thing, especially with companies that report bad earnings report that I'm mindful of is the narrative around that company, right? If this, I don't know what the narrative is around Goose, but if the narrative around Goose is poor, you know, after that earnings report, this can send the stock down even further. We may be hitting this 180 SMA before getting rejected again, but on the short term, if we do end up filling in this gap, this could be a nice play, but if the narrative is negative due to that earnings report, again, we may be selling off from there, right? We've seen this time and time again. The narrative is super important, right? We've seen Tesla stock is a perfect example of this, right? And I've talked about this a lot on the channel. Tesla stock is a company that has been hammered over the past couple of months, mostly due to Obviously, you know, they're unprofitable, right? Their their uh their production numbers were lacking, and also the narrative surrounding the company is very, very negative. Analysts hate Tesla, the media I feel like hates Tesla, and this has been dropping the stock like crazy over the past couple of months. Take a look, literally from 380 all the way down to 176, guys. I can't even believe it. That's like 55% of a drop there, and now we're noticing five. Finally, some life in Tesla, but I'm still being very, very um, uh, cautious because they still haven't reported a good earnings report. The narrative is still negative and the production numbers, we don't know what they are right now. So let's say, you know, they report a great earnings report the next uh, quarter. Let's say they turn a profit. Let's say their production numbers are amazing. You know, this could be a, the shift in the narrative that we need to see before Tesla finally starts to see the light of day again, before it finally finally starts to see a breakout. But as of now, you know, it's looking decent. We're looking like we're holding that 180 SMA. But again, I'm not fully convinced that we're going to pop up quite yet. But hey, who knows? I can be 100% wrong. Um, but I'm just being very, very cautious here with Tesla. So those are just a couple of stocks I'm watching 3M, Disney, you know, Intel, AMD, uh, Tesla, JD.com, Goose. Those are just a couple here. And of course, just like every single week, guys, you know, I mention these every single week. So um, a lot of you guys probably already know them. But the market ETFs here, TQQQ, you know, SQQQ, these are ETFs that I'm watching that trade on the NASDAQ and they're inverse leveraged ETFs. They go up three times what the NASDAQ is going down, right? Or, uh, uh, let me reiterate that for you guys. I don't want to confuse you all. The SQQQ ETF goes up three times what the NASDAQ is going down. So let's say, for example, the NASDAQ sells off 2% one day, SQQQ is going to be going up 6%, right? That's how it works. It goes up when the NASDAQ is selling off. So this could be a play if the markets, in particular the NASDAQ, see a sell-off in the next week, right? But on the flip side, TQQQ, this is one that follows the NASDAQ. And let's say the NASDAQ goes up 2% in a day, the TQQQ ETF is going to be up 6%. It's a 3x leveraged ETF, right? And I get this question a lot, guys. I get this question a lot. Should I hold these as a long-term investment, guys? And me personally, I will never ever do that because the object uh the objective of these is to day trade them. You can literally go on the website and literally read that. These are not meant to be long-term holds due to the decay of them. They're literally meant to be day tradable. Maybe you can hold them for a couple of days due to the extreme volatility, but over time they decay and you will just lose your butt if you hold these for a year, two years due to that decay. And I advise you guys read up into that. It's actually pretty interesting um, how those work. I could do a whole video on that. I don't want to mention it and talk about it now because this video will be 45 minutes long and I don't want to do that. But read up into the, the decay and these inverse levels leverage GTFs, you'll, you'll be fascinated about how it works. So those are two 
that I'm uh, uh, always watching, right? SPXS and SPXL. Those are those are uh, these two are the same as TQQQ and SQQQ, but they trade on the S and P 500, right? So SPXS is going up three times what the S&P is going down. So let's say the S&P goes down 2% one day, this will be up 6%, right? Let's say the SPX goes up 2%, SPXL is going to be up 6%. So those are two that I'm watching uh, pretty much every single week here trading in the stock market. We've noticed how gold, I've been talking about gold a lot, Gold's been going on a ridiculous run over these past couple of weeks as well. We hit 1415. Now you guys can see we're actually up $8 right now, up 0.6%. So excuse me, gold will be a pretty interesting um, thing to watch for this upcoming week. And JNUG in particular, which is an ETF that trades or that goes up rather whenever gold is going up at a 3x rate. Notice how JNUG's a bit overbought now. So ideally, I'd like to see a pullback, maybe back down to 1050, maybe 1075. I'm not sure if we'll get that because gold has been extremely hot. But if we do get that, I think that'll be be a very juicy entry point. But let's say we see gold running up into the 1415 level, 1420. You know, at that point, JNUG will maybe still be a good play, although it's overbought due to how hot gold is, right? It's kind of at this point where technicals don't even matter anymore with JNUG and gold. They just continue to run, although they're overbought. And sometimes that's how it is. And kind that's kind of how I'm viewing the markets right now. They're continuing to run, although they're overbought, although they're overextended. It seems like the technicals don't even matter at, at, at this point, right? You know, crude oil is another one that I'm watching in particular UWT and this kind of fits the same thing as gold and the markets in general it's been overbought but it continues to run it doesn't give a crap about the technicals and at this point we're breaking out of the 180 SMA we're at a resistance from a couple of months ago back in February at about 57.50 to 58 dollars where I think you know if we break this level and maybe you know we retest it as a new support we may be filling the gap back up to 60 and at that point, if we do do that, you know, UWT, which goes up whenever crude oil is going up at a 3x rate, this is going to be an awesome play. And take a look, it's overbought, guys, but again, these have just been disregarding the technicals. They just don't care at this point. But if it does cool off, that's going to offer us a bit bigger of a margin of profit. But let's say it continues to run. It breaks out of the 180 SMA. That can be a big, um, you know, breakout play there. We're noticing how natural gas right now has been one of those that I've been dropping day after day after day. Literally in this month alone, it's gone from 260 down to about 215. And at this point, we're very oversold. And maybe we see a little run back up to that 50 SMA resistance, kind of like we saw back um, in uh, the beginning. On the 6th of June, we kind of saw um, a little run from 233 back up to 241. If we see something similar like that, maybe from 220 up to let's say 230 before retest that 50 SMA resistance, you know, you guys at that point, UGAZ, which goes up whenever natural gas goes up, this can be a very nice bounce back play. And I'm personally watching it. And the beauty of leveraged ETF uh, ETFs, guys, is if you play them right, you know, you can profit on the upside and the downside, right? Let's say I wanted to play this push up. Let's say it plays out perfectly to my plan, which it doesn't always do that. Honestly, guys, uh, it, it, sometimes, it never does that. But, you know, let's say it does, you know, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. But let's say we start to pop up to 230, you know, we can profit on the upside on you guys. And let's say we start to get overbought on the RSI, let's say we start to get rejected there, you know, we can profit on the downside if we continue the downwards push by flipping our money into um, D gas, right? D G A Z, which goes up whenever natural gas is selling off. And this has been absolutely on fire, guys. Take a look from 122 in the beginning of June all the way to nearly $205. That's almost a double in the matter of two, three weeks, which is absolutely 
crazy. So those are just a couple of ETFs and stocks that I'm personally watching this week, guys. If you enjoy this video, go down below and hit that like button again. It really supports me and supports the channel in general. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what do you guys think about these picks? What do you guys think about the stock market this week in the next month? What do you think is going to happen? Are we going to hit a $3,000 SPX? Are we going to sell off? Maybe go back to 2700 I would love to know what you guys have to think. And if you guys have yet to subscribe to the channel, what are you doing? Hit that red button, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell so you're notified every single time that I do make a video. I'll catch you all in the next video. Have a great rest of your weekend. I hope you all do great this week. Peace out.